As a general field, the idea is trying to understand what everything is made of, and exactly, and what. So, trying to understand at, at the very smallest level what uh, things are made of, and uh, how they interact. So that's that's. If I had to put particle physics in two cent in two sentences, that's what I would say. Of course, I mean it's a it's a field which has been a few, it's a, over a hundred years old. There's uh, thousands of people working in it today. I can either give a very short explanation or a very long one. <laughs> so. Physics in general, in uh, it, it varies. Obviously, mold does one thing, and abroad is there are obviously because of the size there are different opportunities. So naturally, there's the research option. Yes, so just to do physics for its own sake, just for the buzz of finding uh, out what's happening. For example. I speak for myself. Uh, if, if I continue doing research, I, I work as a, at a university, continue doing basically the same work I'm doing now, but permanently, then that's a living out of research, yes? But it's not the only thing you can do, because when someone does a math and physics degree, uh, you, you gain skills which are transferable. It's, the subjects are very analytical, so employers like that. Um, they like... Uh, Everybody likes somebody who can think. So I think maths and physics both teach you how to think analytically and how to solve problems. And the skills you learn in solving physics problems or math problems can be applied to anything in life. So I guess as a degree, it's quite transferable. You can do anything. I mean, I have friends who graduated in, uh, in, in science in Malta who, for example, work in auditing firms. Or, yeah, so I, I, I guess the skills that, that you get taught can help in, in, in any field, really, I mean. Once I graduate, I don't know, I, I'm keeping my options open at the moment, so I'm either, I have obviously, I'm obviously thinking about going a career in research, so continue working in particle physics, but, uh, Again, because of the transferable skills that I've learned, um, I'm also thinking about maybe doing a more finance-oriented um, uh, job. Especially if you have a doctorate, then in, in particle physics, which is very uh, data analysis intensive, um, uh, lots of there's lots of software involved. So the, these skills, employers like them, even if they're not in uh, in the physics field. Like in finance, for example, they're very sought after uh, skills. But this is something in Malta, but uh, like a Maltese perspective, because I, I, I think personally, I find it very exciting, and anyone who does physics will tell you that it's ridiculously exciting. Maybe in the public eye, there's not so much exposure. It happens on a day-to-day -day basis. I need to do something. I mean, this is this is when you when you're doing research. It's not something which is in a textbook. You can't go and see. You can't go and see how you're supposed to solve this problem. You're solving the problem for the first time. No one else has done this before, and that that's exciting. If you if you manage to solve it, of course. Sometimes it takes one hour. Sometimes it takes a year. But because it's 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 so it's so it's so deep that. This is really. I mean, what what nature is made up of. I mean, what what. Uh, Whatever, how everything started, going, going, thinking about what happened 15 billion years ago. I never was particularly religious, that's what they say. But the important thing about science is keeping an open mind. So, to each their own, I guess. I, I have friends who are very religious, who are who are particle physicists as well. So, I don't think one exactly happened before the other. Maybe a combination of the two. That was that was an amazing experience. I mean, that's basically what hooked me to do uh, particle physics. So, um, yeah, Dr. Nikki Samud basically had uh, arranged for some multi students to go to CERN, and um, I was it was a the nine ten week uh, project basically based there. We had some lectures. Uh, we had a small project. It was I mean, it's extremely exciting because you're at CERN for the, and for the first time. It's it's something amazing. Um, uh, and you meet people from 
loads of different cultures and uh, countries. There's about 300, I think around 300 interns every, every summer. I was working on some so yeah, there, there are there are four detectors at uh, there's they're called detectors at the LHC four big ones, and I was working in, in one, one one of these and I was just in the project I had was obviously a very small one something that somebody completely new to the field can do in uh, six seven weeks, um, so I was just investigating some effects which happened to some sub 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 component of the detector it was a very small thing, but I got to present the results in a collaboration meeting where you get all these big guys in the in the collaboration who are there okay it was exciting it was scary as well but it was fun i was paid for by cern so cern funded my internship but yeah so I, I i think some of the other students were funded by by Malta, so there's a basically a mix The competition is tight. I mean, by yeah, it's difficult, very, very difficult. I mean, even at, a, at 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 an EU level, in the sense that finding a, a job in research is not easy. By yeah, I'm not going to lie, it's not something which uh, I would suggest to somebody who, who expects to have it easy and uh, get a PhD and walk into a job because it doesn't work like that. I don't think it works like that, at least. Physics is a bit of a geek subject, yes. So uh, these are people who are dedicated to, to what they do and they love what they do. So uh, if, if if you love something, then you're probably going to do it well. But maybe those are the more theoretical physicists. So those are the real uh, trailblazers who come up with something completely new and revolutionize the way we think about uh, physics. I, I work on the data analysis side, so I have the challenge of trying to find out whether what these guys say is, uh, is true or false. Richard Feynman, for example, is one of my favorite ones. Um, uh, and he's, he's, he's also said to dispel the myth that uh, physicists are boring, because um, this guy used to play the bongos, he was famous for chasing girls all the time. Um, I just try to work hard, that's it. <laughs> I don't have uh, no, no groundbreaking discoveries yet. <laughs> I play the bongos, I, uh, I play football with a Maltese club. I, th I think in Malta there's, there's a bit of a, less of an understanding of what physics is about. I mean, not, not, what, not, not less of an understanding of physics, but what it's ab about at a research level, yes? Because maybe it's not so practical and uh, there's no real immediate financial incentive to do physics. But if someone is less likely to understand what I'm doing or know about what I'm doing than in the, in the UK or, or in Switzerland. Maybe there should be a bit more public exposure in Malta. At the University of Malta, I know that there's, there's research going on and, uh, and they, they do good physics, but just not this field. Because the department isn't, uh, isn't very large, like all other university departments in Malta. So you cannot... Uh, so you, you, you cannot have somebody working on every field, and particle physics is one of the fields which there's nobody working in, in Malta. In the UK, if you have a, a PhD, then the salary is between 28 and 32,000 pounds, I think, a year, give or take. So that's the, if you have a doctorate, yes? So a, a postdoc position, basically. Postdoctoral uh, researcher will earn that kind of money. You move up, you become a lecturer, uh, then I imagine you get paid more. I was, I was really lucky that I started my PhD basically just when the, the LHC started running properly. When I started my PhD, it was just starting up. So there was loads of excitement. I mean, the very first, uh, the very first days, weeks of running, was in, was incredibly exciting. I mean, just just to be so close to be able to follow it, to see what's happening, and uh, new thresholds are being reached all the time. Uh, I, I I think that was. Uh, I'm I'm quite glad that I, I was able to yeah to live through that. And also at CERN, the Higgs is going to be found. Um, obviously we don't know for sure yet, but there's strong hints of it, and this is extremely exciting because this is. A five billion dollar project, yes, which has been built to do this exactly this thing, and everybody thinks it's going to happen relatively soon. 
there's loads left which you don't understand. So the, the number of unanswered problems is incredible. So, for example, um, we only know what about 5% of the universe is made up of. That's, that's quite a poor fraction. When, when you consider what a lot we think we know, it's, it's, we only un really understand 5% of the universe. So what's, what's the other 95%? And like CERN is trying to solve um, uh, one, of, one of these, uh, trying to answer one of these questions. On discovering or looking for, uh, new new particles which would help to explain what some of this 95 percent is i don't think there's saturation is uh is close and even when we do understand this 95 percent i'm sure another problem will crop up like 400 years ago or whenever newton thought he had understood everything yes einstein came along changed everything and that will continue happening i think uh, at least for the foreseeable future mm -hmm.